What is up everyone, Osman Fong here. Today we're gonna talk about this Ryobi power inverter. With this plus a Ryobi battery, you'll be able to power up your house. So this little device can provide 150 watts of power using any of your 18 volt Ryobi battery. So after inserting the battery, you'll be able to do three things on here. The first thing, you have your power button. So once you press it, it will turn green and you'll hear some air sound. That means the inverter is now ready to use. And you have a red button on the top. You click on it, flashlight. So this flashlight is not the strongest, but it is good enough to see in the dark. So after that, there are also two USB ports that can power up your phones or any uh, USB devices. But most importantly here, this power outlet. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect this inverter to your house and what you should do to make this work. And I'm going to take you to downstairs and I'm going to show you some key components. So in order to use this inverter, we're going to have to go to the panel on the outside and turn off one of the rooms. So now that the upstairs rooms has no power, but also getting the circuit cut from the entire house. So let's go upstairs. So here we go, we're upstairs. Right now, um, our light is not working. Assuming there's a power outage, we want to cut off the power from the breaker so that this room is its own circuit. Now that the room is ready, we can plug our battery to one of the outlets. We need a cable to go from this inverter to one of the outlets. So now let's go ahead and make a cable. To make a cable, um, you're gonna need a wire cutter, your unused cable with this three prong to use. So this is the result, how it should look like. I'm gonna make it from scratch so you can see how it's done. You're gonna cut off. So there are three cables inside. You can use your wire cutter to strip the jacket out. So do it very gently and then pry out the jacket. All right, so this jacket is now out. So we have this three wire here. What is this is like, like an extra protection for the cable. Uh, we don't really need it so we can like cut this part out so it is not in the way and now we need to have the copper sticking out use one of one of these holes right here then just pull so one of this hole cutter kind of like cut off the jacket and then you can pull it so all right so here we go these three connections when we connect to the second wire we want to match the color so i have this uh, cable connector where two cables put in so I'm gonna put put in one ouch I'm gonna put in a green and then we're gonna put in this green so green is a ground and then we have a hot and neutral so if you don't have these which is fine you can use some of this product uh, I recommend you can use this nut right here or you can use this one which is a straight up plugged in but I like this better because I can reuse them if I want to. If the cable are kind of like messy, you know, you can get them together by twisting it. All right, so now our cable is done. So I'm going to try to do everything in one take. So as you can see, there's no power in the room right now. We just made this cable. On one side, we're gonna plug to the wall. On the other side, we're going to plug to the battery. Then, we're going to turn it on like that. Yep. So now it is on and we have power in the room. How amazing it is. And if you don't believe it, this is the power button. If we press it, it turns off the power. And we turn it on again. Here, we have the power in the house. But make sure you only have power in this one room. And I won't recommend using this for the whole house. Or if you have multiple of this battery inverter, then you can use it on multiple rooms. Now that we have made it work, we need to know how long does this battery last. So let's go back to the studio and I'm going to show you some example. So this is how it looks like with a normal room settings. So we have an example here. This battery right here, we have 4 amp hour battery. And we have a ceiling light that is using 100 watts. So to calculate our time, this equation. We need to find a time. We have the capacity, but we don't have current. So how do you find current? Power in watts equals to voltage times current. All right, so this is a formula. And if we reorganize it, we have current equals to power divided by voltage. All right, so we have power in 100 watts 
developed by Voltage, which is 120 volt. You notice they're using 120 volt from the outlet. That would give us 100 divided by 120, 0 0.8333 amp. We can come back here and find out our time. So our time, and we have the capacity of 4 m hour divided by this much current. So that should give us 4 divided by 0 0.8. 333 4.8 hours so if we are only using the 4 m hour and only using this 100 watt light for this room the maximum this battery can handle 4.8 hours in theory why do i say in theory it is because over time the capacity of the battery gets smaller usually you would lose about 20 percent safe to say if we do that times 0.8 have about closer to 4 hours if you're using a 4 amp hour. So that is uh, how much this battery can handle. So use these two equations if you want to find out how much time you have remaining uh, on your battery. So how to find out the wattage that is being used on your devices. They are pretty easy to find. For example, we have a phone charger here. It tells you the output, which is uh, 5 volt, 2 amp. Your wattage is 10 watt. If you're planning to use the heater while the power is out, it is generally not a good idea because the wattage from this heater are quite a lot for example right here this heater requires 1500 watts to operate the product that we have can only give you 150 watts so anything above 150 watts is not going to turn on even though in theory the battery can generate maybe like two minutes of heat the inverter actually has a limit on how much of the device that can go uh, with this inverter even though it gets plugged into a regular wall because this is the main power source and if you have multiple devices in the room make sure all of that combined is less than 150 watts if you're using something bigger let's say for example example this is a gas power generator has a lot of wattage to use and yes you can also install this in your house so you can still use the power cord earlier to plug in one of the rooms but this needs to stay outside and not inside normally you will have a company to create another outlet that is uh right next to the power breaker for example with this plug that is installed outside of your house you'll be able to plug in a whole generator to power the whole house minus the AC or water heater. You have a generator outside, you have a plug that is outside, an electrician install a separate electrical switch or you can call it breaker, you know, on the breaker box or outside of it to let you turn off certain breaker and turn on this breaker. This gets connected to here, this gets connected to the breaker and then this breaker will connect to the remaining of the breaker. You will turn this power off so the power to the meter gets cut off and that way your whole generator can power the whole house keep your refrigerator on um, you can still wash your clothes but not dry it you have 4500 watts instead of 150 watts that we saw earlier you know the downside is you know you have to go grab gas also it is gonna make a lot of sound but it is your choice um, if you want to back up your house you know there are these two ways to do it so this has been the Ryobi converter that you can get it from Amazon for about $40 and you'll be able to power up your room. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video so far, make sure to hit the like button for the almighty YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you want to see my face again and I'll see you in the next video. Shh.